Hey everybody, hope you're all doing alright there. Something slightly different today, but also similar to what I've done in the past. You know, I'm massively interested in engineering and space and physics and tools and those sorts of things. So when I heard about a space mission needing a special tool because of a stuck fastener, my interest peaked. So I'm going to very quickly explain what this is about and how uh, we got how I got to this point of making this video because as I say I haven't seen anyone else really obsess over the tool and I've actually made a CAD Pro uh, 2D CAD of the tool so you can see what it is and how it works and it's amazing why they had to go to these lengths but you'll see. So Osiris Rex was a space mission which was launched in September of 2016 to go to an asteroid called Bennu and then it arrived in December 2018, about 19 kilometers away from it, and it moved closer and then did mapping for a couple of years. Uh, they did the sample taking, which I'll get to in a moment, and it sucker punched an asteroid uh, in 2020. It leaves the asteroid in 2021. The sample is recovered in 2023, and then they realize have problems opening it. In January of this year, 2024, they realized there was some stuck fasteners and they've just recently opened it using the tool that was made that this video is about. So to recap, silver bumblebee with a massive appendage flies to an asteroid, Bennu. It then wants to collect a sample. Now the way they, they explain this is basically um, they have a thing called a TAGSAM, which is a touch and go sample acquisition module. I believe that's what it stands for, which is great. Which basically means we're going to sucker punch it and take some bits. So this is what they did. They had this mechanism on the end of an arm, which just punches into the surface, comes flying back out, and that's their sample taken. So the way this basically worked is that it was like an open dish, and when it hit the surface, it blew gas around it to suck it into a container and then closed it. They had problems closing that because some rocks got caught in the mechanism, but they managed to get it to close. So they had a sealed compartment, so they had all that sample inside there. They also had an amount on the outside uh, that they brought back as well. So you got like mildly contaminated stuff and uncontaminated stuff on the inside. So it was very useful. And you can look way more into that side of it. I just want to talk about this tool. So that round thing there that's about to sucker punch this asteroid. <laughs> it's great. Is that. Uh, and you can see that's the, the front surface of this here is what hit down onto the surface. So basically it blew gases through the sides, which sucked up through the inside, and then this thing clamped closed, as I understand it, which kept the samples inside. And they needed to open this up. So there is the underside of that. As you can see, this is uh, some of the loose material that wasn't stowed away, but they could still use in scientific research. But yeah, anyway, the problem they had was to get to the inside of this, like like one of those compartments on a, on a hoover or something, you know, you have to give like a little box. They had to undo all these screws. And I noticed these screws are not normal. I don't know if that's a known um, type. The screwdriver for it looks kind of weird. And the screw head looks kind of weird. It's not a Phillips. It's, I mean, it's got stuff written on it I can't quite make out, but it's very shallow and it's got an interesting sort of design to it. It looks like it's designed to, let's have a look, this is, this looks like a longer surface than this, which is weird. Uh, but if you were loosening it, you'd have more surface to undo it. So maybe, it's, yeah, if there's enough of a surface there to do it up, but more of a surface here to undo it, I'm not sure. That I don't know. But what I do know is that these are slightly weird. Uh, and they needed to... Oh, there's a snap one. Is that a snap? Oh, no, no, no. That's not a snap one. No, no, no. That's... There's more of these. These are obviously designed to break these bolts. But there's another one there. That's where you machine it down to a known thickness so you know it breaks a known amount. So it was some of these fasteners here that got broken. And using the tools they had available, they couldn't open them. And when you say they have using the tools that are available. It doesn't mean what's in the toolkit or what's down the road. Any tool that goes near any of this sample, they need to know everything about that tool, including its chemical makeup and everything. So you can, if anything got, you know, contaminated by the tool, you'd know that, oh, what we found here was from the tool. So you can't just grab any other tool and use it because it, it was like an approved set. So to undo one of these fasteners, you know, if you were working on a motorcycle for instance you'd probably just grab a little uh, impact drill and just da -da 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 and get it open um 
drill it out, do something like that. It'd be easy, just pop it off. You can't in this scenario. So they had to come up with the tool. So this is the tool they came up with. Um, I heard about they needed to make a specialist tool. So I was really interested to hear and see what it was. And there it is. And I'm like, okay, that's, that's very interesting looking. But wait, what actually is that? And I can show you what that is. And it's amazingly simple and clever at the same time. Uh, but the reason why it's so overly engineered and so, you know, rudimental and it's when you see the machining so rough on this is because this had to be made out of a stainless steel. Everything made of stainless steel, basically. Uh, it has to be cleaned. It has to be a known of known properties before it can be cleaned, put in the bags and put into the sealed environment with the sample and actually used, which is why it took them, you know, a few months to get from, ah, oh, that screw stuck to actually getting it undone. This is the only image I've been able to find of this tool, and obviously I don't know exactly what is going on underneath here, but I'm going to hazard a guess, because of the function of this is quite obvious when you sort of break it down. So using a 2D CAD program, I've remade what I can see, not accurately necessarily, just the generalised layout, uh, and I've guessed as to what's going on underneath. But basically, what this thing is, is a press for a screwdriver ratchet because as far as i can tell uh looking at the images you've got a body here and a secondary piece here which is like a tail which probably hooks underneath the thing you're trying to press between you've got this thread and you can see from the angle of those threads that if you turn it right it's going to go down which is going to apply pressure at the top of here this is just a ratchet extension, this is a ratchet bit and this is a screwdriver bit, although this screwdriver bit is a little bit weird because if you can see the shape of the cut on it, but that is to match those fasteners. In fact, hang on a minute, you can actually see what it says there about a quarter inch by something USA. Don't know. Don't know. But that is just a socket bit. That is a ratchet extension. That appears to be a ratchet, I assume. And I'll get into why that is in a minute, but as you can see, that then attaches to this threaded part. So this screws down, which applies pressure to this. So I believe this will be a free moving ratchet mechanism here, because if it wasn't, you wouldn't be able to turn this many turns before that gets stuck against the side of the housing. So that's what I'm going to assume. I think this is just a bolt to apply pressure. So I'm going to assume the underneath of it is like a foot like this. The, um, the tag sam is put into it like this, so they clamp it through the screw. So you get a good force onto that screw and then you can use the ratchet to loosen it off and then let this off a little bit more and loosen it off and, and once you've broken it free it's going to undo. It seems like this has been made with other applications in mind in the future possibly uh, because or maybe they were just the size of the machine bed they had or pieces of billet or what I don't know or it was just ease of use creation sorry. That This is made of two parts because you can see here that that central piece is of the foot, as I'm going to call it, and these outer parts are clearly from the top section, which is made out of one piece as well. So my assumption is that the foot fits in something like this, it's bolted in here, um, which gives it a hinge, which is interesting because that would allow you to allow this to be at a slightly different angle, and that bolt there, I'm assuming actually bolts all the way through and holds it together. Maybe if you loosen this a little bit, if there was a bit of free play in this hole, as in directional, you could actually have this tool be slightly angled in or angled out from straight to apply the pressure as, uh, you know, straight down into the screw head as you possibly can, because that's what you have to do, get the screw head directly where it's supposed to be and turn it. I mean, remember, so they just need to crack these off. So it's, yeah, it's a small vice press with a ratchet in it with a screwdriver head that just cracks them off and it worked but it took months and obviously a lot of thought well you say a lot of thought it's a really simple thing they probably came up with this the engineer who designed this in 10 minutes but to then you know build it get it approved and get it through it took a long while but that is what that thing is i have to say i've noticed that all the fasteners seem to still be in so maybe they just tried to crack them loose and these ones wouldn't crack loose before actually undoing the whole lot. That would make a lot of sense to do that. So that is look inside the open capsule. If you look, you can see the side of it, it looks like an air filter. That's there. They basically pop the top of it like, like a vacuum cleaner dust collection bin. Uh, is that from the inside or is that from the top? 
I'm not sure. That might be the, like, the next layer down because there's no screws in it. I've just realised that in these images, look, they've got the, um, the measurements all marked out. So you can see in the images. These are from NASA. What is that? <gasps> Could it be? Could this be in my hand a purest piece of green? If you get that props. If you want to learn more about this mission, there's loads of information out there and videos on it. Uh, the channels I watch to keep up to date with sort of space news and technology and discoveries and stuff like that is Scott Manley, obviously, Everyday Astronaut, and Anton Petrov. Uh, those three channels for me keep me up to date with what's going on in space i don't feel like i ever miss anything but i yeah I, I don't know who would be as nerdy as me or lame as to be as interested in this over everything else and make a video on it that's why i did it if you enjoyed this video hit the like button subscribe if you're new here if you want to help support this channel please consider doing that through patreon if you have any questions I mean, you can ask me, but I think I know, I've explained about as much... Explained? Correction, I've assumed this much so far. <laughs> With good, good educated guesses at times. Um, I may be able to answer it. I probably won't. There are probably much better people to ask, but yeah. There you go. Catch you next time.